I'm here at the uh, Rose Bowl. I'm speaking to you. May I have your name, please? Ben Pitts. Ben Pitts. Yeah. Now, is this, is, are these your shirts here? Yeah, these are our shirts. We and, make them. and so when you say you make them, do you do any of the artwork or do you find vintage uh, artwork? We or? find vintage uh, prints, advertisements, photographs. Uh -huh. We make the shirts ourselves. And uh, what pro you use the silk screen process? It's a heat transfer process. Oh, heat transfer. What, what does that mean? It's, uh, it's, it's called Chromoblast. Chromoblast? Chromoblast. It, uh -huh. and we, it's a digital transfer. We take the image and we press it directly onto the shirt and the ink adheres to the shirt. It's very breathable, uh -huh. very smooth, lightweight. So how long does it take you to do that? So I, it sounds like it's a one process. You, you can't batch process these things. You do one of these at a time. Yeah. So how long would you say it takes each one of these things? Oh. It, it, finding the image and then no, I don't mean find the image. I mean well, you found the image, you find the image, you've got everything ready, and now you're making several of these. Yeah. So how much, how long does each one take once about, you've got it all? It takes about a minute. Oh, about a minute. Okay, well, great. Well, that's fantastic. So, is this your only job, or were you doing something prior to this? Uh, I work at the Long Beach Museum of Art also. The Long, Beach. Long Beach Museum of Art. Mm -hmm. Are you a, a curator or a docent, or what? What do you do there? Prep the art, um, change out installations. I see. So that sounds like a very high level, high security uh, kind of job. I mean, that's a museum with yeah. very expensive paintings. I assume they know who everyone, everyone's there. Uh, I've been there for almost three years. Wow. That's great. So can I ask you about your tattoos? Which I assume is a subject that, that does come up every so often. So about about every half hour. So uh, how did the process start? I assume you didn't one day go from having no tattoos to a whole bunch of them. I assume there was a, a process. So how old were you when you got your first tattoo? First tattoo I got was 22 years ago when I was 18 years old in the Navy. So you're 40 years old now. And so when you were in the Navy, and what was the circumstances in the Navy that you got your tattoo? Sure, boredom. Boredom. And what was the first tattoo you got? What did it look like? A rose tattoo. Then how long was it before you got your second tattoo? About six years. Oh, it took six years from tattoo one to tattoo or two. And what was it? Uh, just some old stuff here. Old arm tattoos. Wow, look at that. Very early uh, stuff. So. A friend of mine, uh, matter of fact, she's my editor, uh, she has several tattoos that are on her back. And there are a, bird, a couple birds on, on either side. Now, she's about 33 or so. She was much younger when she got these. And she leads me to believe that within the world of tattoos, there's like a hierarchy. Or I mean, maybe there's a, maybe that's not the right word, but there are people that have the hidden tattoos. Then they have the tattoos like on their arm that shows then I assume we come to you, which has to be at the very top of the grade. So, what would they call? Where would what, what would your what would the title of someone that is as committed to tattoos as you are? What would they call that? I don't know if there is a title for it, but the tattoo community is kind of strange. Uh huh. Half the people in the tattoo community are totally opposed to anything hand, face, neck, whatever. And what what is what is their what's the basis of their opposition? Um, it's kind of a taboo, a line that you don't cross, so you can still function in society. Uh huh. But I have well, you obviously you have skills, and, and I'm good natured, so I can function fine in society. It's just a kind of a stigma with tattoos that show. You know, years and years ago, you know, I'm uh, I'm almost sixty, and so I was there, I was around uh, uh, during the the summer of love, let's say, and there used to be a guy on the on the Sunset Strip that he had this wild frizzy hair and it came out to there, literally came out to there. And this friend of mine observed that this guy, he must be really good at something because in order for that guy to survive looking like the way he does, he must have some incredible skill. So he had a lot of respect for that guy who in an age of, who in an age of people going pretty far, he went further than. So someone such as yourself, do people assume that you must have some incredible skill? Yeah, people ask me, a lot of people ask me, what do you do for a living? Or uh, are you a trust fund baby? Or uh, 
when, uh, how long have you spent so when, the so, so when they say trust fund baby, do you, do you find that insulting? Because that suggests that you, no, you just, haven't on your own been able to... I don't really find it insulting. I just think people can't even fathom that somebody would do this to themselves because society is like so particular about what you do for a living and how much money you make. Sure. And I just want to live life like I want to live it. And I'm, I'm not going to worry about what anybody thinks about me. And, well, you're not the first one in history, you know, to, oh, sure. I mean, it goes, goes back and there's, uh, I've seen a lot, I've studied a lot of this kind of thing. Um, and so it's, it's not, you know, it's not all that new, but I find it, you know, very, very intriguing. I'm just wondering, well, what's it like for a person to have distinguished himself in that way? What are the problems? What are the discriminations? What are the perks? Because I, I assume you work at a, at a very, at, at a place where the security is very important, well, you'd be one of the most secure guys because <laughs> you can be identified, <laughs> you know, pretty pretty easily. Yeah, and you know, I'm not a felon. I'm just a normal guy, and so I, I'm not too worried about it. If if I had something to hide, then I definitely wouldn't have done it. But I, yeah. Sure. Well, I think it kind of proves a couple things that you've got nothing to hide right. because because it you know such such an extreme, and that you obviously must be self-supporting that somehow you have something where you're your own man you're in charge of your universe so uh, what sort of educational background do you have just high school military and how far did you go in the military um, I was in I was stationed in San Diego yeah. uh -huh. and then I was stationed up in San Francisco I was, in, I was stationed by aircraft carrier and that was quite a few years ago and basically after I got out I just I kind of went into construction, trim carpentry, um, I've done all kinds of different maintenance and just a little bit of everything, just a jack of all trades. And, wow, that's fantastic. Um, you know, it really is, a lot of life is just common sense. So, I assume common sense, hard work, determination, right. and a sense in your case of knowing who you are and uh, what you want to do with your life. Exactly. Well, great.